Welcome back, everyone. This segment is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. And by the SANS Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training certification and research. Visit SANS.org to learn more. And by Tenable Network Security, the creators of Nessus, the world's best vulnerability scanner. Jumpstart your security program today and evaluate Security Center CV, the continuous monitoring solution. Visit Tenable.com for more information. I also have some new merchandise. If you visit shop.securityweekly.com very shortly here, you will find, <coughs> excuse me, Hack Naked. I don't know how well you can see that on camera. Um, but we have Hack Naked um, rocks glasses. These are Hack Naked rocks glasses. Yeah. You need something white nice. to put in there. I do. Uh, we have Hack Naked beer steins. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And we have Hack Naked... Shot glasses, and those are those are impressive shot glasses. They're, they're really well, hefty, well, yeah, they're well, well made on the shot of them. glasses. So you're, you know, you might damage yourself doing shots with those things. Um, all of these glasses are limited edition, and they have a very special Hack Naked logo, which was never used in production up until this time. So the only place we've used this particular slightly modified logo, I don't know if you can see it. But the slightly modified logo, there is a nipple. It has nipples. It, there is a nipple. There is a nipple on it. I, I, I did not print this in any kind of general anywhere. I never printed it anywhere. Is it internal use only? Does that mean the and cowboy's got... No, oh, never mind. Uh, no, we only... We had, this is the just cowboy a, has foreskin. Well, this was just a dry... He's, this was a dry what run? What if is he's it? a... Jewish cowboy. That's <laughs> guys, guys, guys. Uh, then he's got the foreskin. I mean, <laughs> or no, he doesn't. Never mind. So <laughs> never mind. These these have nipples. Only if he clicks, is souvenirs. my point. So if you dig the hack naked <laughs> logo, you want something a little different. If you want a little nipple, uh, you, you know what? You could make slippery nipples in those. You could make slippery nipples in your nipple glasses. Yes. You mean your shot glasses? Your shot glasses. In sure. your nipple glasses? In your nipple. Well, they're nipple glasses because they have a nipple logo on them. That's true. They're hack naked nipple glasses. You, you know, now you just need to find the to see if a baby nipple fits over one of the top of those because then they'll really be nipple glasses. That's right. That's right. So what are we? We're talking about <laughs> cyber UL. Yeah, we have to. Is that like a new? Ter- what is, is this like a whole new term? Cyber UL. No. Is it new? Jack, I'm promising it's you. It's not a new term. It uh, dates back uh, to <coughs> probably the, the, the most well-known article on this was Tan at Loft. Um, wrote about this 16 and a half years ago. Oh, interesting. And uh, that was not a new idea at the time, but he did a, a concise and well-written article, uh, a post about it in 99. Um, but the idea had floated around earlier in the 90s, if not before. And Rob makes some fantastic points. However, uh, Tan's uh, commentary and response, which are in my show notes, points out places where Rob fails to have grasped um, these 17-year-old comments uh, that were in the original article from Tan when when Loft was still a thing. it's far from perfect, but uh, some of the stuff that, uh, that Rob dismisses uh, is actually addressed in this. Now, the reality of what we get out of a government-mandated cyber UL rather than an independent one that's uh, driven by industry, driven by the insurance industry, uh, yep. is, is a very different animal. Um, if it turns out being the stunning... Um, the stunning fiasco that uh, common criteria can be, then that's that's problematic. Uh, but the the reality is, if we continue to attack every proposal to have some accountability, um, I fear that what will happen is we will get laws mandating accountability, and we're not going to be involved in the drafting of them. Um, mm-hmm. So Rob has some some as always has some insightful comments. I think if you're really interested in this. Please read the the original document that Tan wrote back. Um, 1999. 99. It's linked. Uh, January and, 11th, yeah, 1999. And it's, it's linked and then also read, more importantly, his response uh, written in the past day or two <clears throat> to uh, primarily to Rob's, even though he doesn't call Rob out, um, and, and then have a conversation about it. I mean, it, one of the points I've made in a couple of recent talks is that 
Um, I hate automotive analogies, but in the car business, we have standardized crash tests. Do they test every automobile and truck on the road into every other vehicle at every possible speed and angle? No. No. Is it's it a representative still, sample. Is it still? Have it's because some we have a, we have a lot of civilian researchers that do it for us, Jack. Yeah. Well. So hey, you guys, you've seen we the need movie to start killing then. people. We need yeah. to still start killing people with software, and then it'll be serious. And thankfully, that's well. So let me ask a, uh, All right. So here's what I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, aside from Robert and some of his work on it, was. I think it's an interesting concept, right? I mean, we've talked about similar things along the way, which is how do you rate the security of something? Is there a process that it goes through? But I have kind of a somewhat obvious question. If this makes sense, why isn't UL in the business? I mean, UL is in 2012, they went, they're now a for profit corporation and they're doing a lot more than just electricity. They, they have a full range of things that they do and they do safety and compliance education. So, I mean, if, if there's a market for this, no, the why problem aren't they is in it? that, and this goes back to Tan's original post, which is this can't be market driven. Otherwise, you end up with ICSA. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, that may have been editorializing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but why can't it be market driven? I, I don't understand that. I, I don't. I'm not sure. I agree because, with that. What, what are the because that? the market dr the market driven puts economic forces on it. Now, unfortunately, the politically driven, which is what we're getting, puts the market forces yeah. on it too. Something this large is going to have and, forces that right. And yeah. so, you know, where it may actually make sense is where the original UL idea took off, which was from insurers losing money mm -hmm. hand over fist over fires. But that's, mar Once that's still have, a market force. Well, that's a market force to invest in a um, quasi-independent, <coughs> right? It's a, it's a market force that helps companies make more money because they're right. not paying it, out but it's a market. Yeah. it's a market force that supported independent analysis. And some yeah, of the okay, look, I, things, I'm on board. Yeah. And some of the important things that, you know, UL did over the years was they... There are things that are UL certified, but there are also things that are UL listed. Mm -hmm. Listed yep. doesn't mean it's secure or certified, whatever. Mm -hmm. It means we know it exists and have documentation about it. Yep. UL also, uh, you know, the new version doesn't get grand grandfathered as it should not, right? Um, and they also list installers for security systems, for example. You're a listed installer, um, so that means we know you exist. That means we know we you exist. No and we know some stuff about you. And because there's money on the table and they can afford to do it because of the people that subscribe to their services, they do spot checks on the companies that do security system installation. And if you fail a spot check, you're you're unlisted, right? It, it's a not a perfect model. Tan, seventeen years ago and in the past couple of days, has pointed out some mm. of the shortcomings. Um, but, but we don't need perfection, right? right. We need we, something to we advance. Need to get, we need to get a little bit better. You yeah. know, Jeremiah Grossman has talked about software liability for years and years. <clears throat> uh, and, and the real challenge that I see is that if we as a, you know, calling us an industry is kind of a joke. But if we as an industry fail to address this internally or embrace the less bad proposals, we're going to get government regulations that are yeah, but so here's here's you know look I you know where I stand on that I make that very clear pretty much every I, week. I, but I know that we we need more government regulation. There you go. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Because because you like the CFAA, that's totally chilling for you. So you know the the thing is um, in in that right, moving s simple is always going to be better than moving more complex. So I, I like this notion uh, to the cyber UL. Uh, I like the notion of it. I, I think where. Um, I'm not going to put any words in Rob's mouth, but where he opens his piece, he's looking at a very narrow band of it, whereas, yeah. you know, Mudge himself has said zippy. So there is a little bit of, well, let's kind of see what happens here. But <laughs> one of the things that I've been looking at for a while that I think is kind of important is you have to have a standard. The standard, that, but here's an interesting challenge because, you know, I told you, Paul, I'd save this up. Part of me asking about what our backgrounds were into this, I, I've noticed something in communication and I'm noticing it now in leadership. There's a lot of people that have risen to a position that we dub leader. Let's leave it where it is for now. Paul and rises they go to out. a position every morning. <laughs> <laughs> 
and they go out and, they, and they'll, they'll now, make so these very right. assertive wow. statements Fuck about weird. how they've done it Sorry. and how they've done it is the way. It's the right way because that's how they've done it. And what's fair to that is there weren't a lot of other paths. I mean, a lot of folks that are what we call pioneers are people that are leading in this industry today. They didn't have a choice. There wasn't a, a defined path. They had to pick their own. So part of the reason we have so many freaking standards is because we have so many people that have had to do their own thing. But now our cognitive biases kick in, our egos kick in, uh, our inability to look for it. And so what we need is some systematic way to look for these universal truths. If this is an organization that, that doesn't just say, here's the standard because I'm the really smart person, listen to me, but says, hey, you know what, we've gone and evaluated a bunch of standards. I, I did this as an exercise for a client about 12 years ago. They asked me to go look at about eight of the leading risk assessment standards. And I reached out to a number of the people that created them, and I said, gosh, you feel a lot like standard B. What's different? They said, oh, you know, I didn't like the way that they labeled their stuff, so I, re I did my own. Well, seriously? You, you didn't like the labeling, so you, you created your own? So I, I think that there's an opportunity here. You know, there's another thing I'll throw out to it, too, because UL, at least, is insurance-driven. You know, like you, sometimes you feel like you 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 m missed an opportunity. Um, I took a pretty serious effort, maybe ten or twelve years ago. We called it the Security Wellness Index. Wellness is perhaps the wrong model, but what we looked at was was pegging it to an index and looking at about ten factors that could represent the health or your approach to security in the organization. But as an index, it was kind of like consumer price index. We know that it's going to shift and adjust, and so if you wanted to write a law or legislation to it. All you were asking people to do is get to the zero scale. If you went to the positive side, that meant you were doing things that are above and beyond. That translates into reduced fees for compliance, but, but reduced Mike, insurance, yeah. everything else. And if you don't hold up to it, you have to pay more for it. The key with standards, though, is where you set the bar, right? Well, I mean, it, it's in there sometimes well, there's, and that's there's why no place to set the bar. If you set it too low, it's completely useless. If you set it too high, it's also completely useless. But that's why but you peg it as an, but, and that's why I was bringing in the concept of an index, right? I mean, look, this is the applied <laughs> economist in me, but, but when you put it as an index, the index then can have multiple standards and each of the standards can shift as long as you balance everything back to a, yeah, to a, that, a zero that scale. That requires math and no one I didn't say it was so, easy, Paul. So that, you don't yeah, see me doing it anymore. Math is hard. The sounds, other thing sounds is like one smoke one and mirrors to me. One of the complaints about the It's because you're not an economist, Larry. Sounds like smoke and mirrors to me fear that once it's cyber ul listed people will assume it's secure mm. Mm -mm. right which is like a pci complaint or a hipaa complaint or whatever but the flip side of that is when i pay a dollar 99 for a string of christmas lights and they have a ul tag on them i know for a fact <laughs> now that's physical in the physical world is, is i fact? look at it and i say Yep. What a piece of shit. <laughs> this, <laughs> this it, it would, you know, it's this it meets a set of standards. This is not, you know, th this is it's okay. I'll put it in a tree and I'm going to get yeah. I'm going to get a year or two out of it. But do you see and the same when thing I buy, when the merchant has PCI certified in the door? Do you have that same thing like, "Oh, my credit card's like, not going to be stolen." Yeah. No, cuz I know better. Well, right. well, first of all, your credit card you don't care though. Nobody You're cares. Christmas lights for me, Jack. Nobody what, what, cares about about your credit card because we have no skin in the game. Yeah, and we can't Fires, go here. We have skin in the game. Here, yeah. But what but about, here, what if, about you want, if you want credit cards solved, and I air quote solved, um, make everybody signature. liable for the first fifty dollars. <laughs> no, forget technology. Technology is not part of it. Oh, so chip and pin. No, <laughs> that's technology is not part <laughs> of it. Chip and sign. Do you take the technology, technology out of it? Technology is sign. not part of it. <laughs> chip and blood sample. Make every person who has a credit card <laughs> responsible for, and it doesn't have to yes, be a lot. We've talked about this before. The first fifty yeah, bucks but every want... time their card gets reissued, no matter whose fault it is. You know what, Jack? <laughs> you and I are totally in agreement on that. Because <laughs> like, right, that's, the, ec that's the economist again, right? So. What if UL were to collaborate with people who make software that can test devices such as medical yeah. devices or digital security devices for vulnerabilities? Mm. This so, is the, so and, the standardized and, platforms are uh, things that, you know, that all of the, the security and software think tanks have talked about for decades. The reason, I, the reason I say that is because that happened, actually, Codenomicon. It yeah. makes fuzz, fuzzing software for, yeah. for, for embedded systems. Yeah. Yeah. They, you know, it, and the problem, problem again, stuff. Yeah. is yeah. that they're in, in many circles, people like Codenomicon are evil vendors 
It's mm. like, no, they make a great. But tool. I think they can but help. It's exp- it. But dude, it's expensive. But they do. You, you pay what you get what you pay but, for. But you have. But yes, you, because having shit software is not expensive. But, yes, <laughs> right. But define expensive yeah. in the terms of the standard, right? Yeah. Like they may complain. Vendors say, "Well, they, UL, they got this new testing thing, and now I have to do some security." Some of that security may be like, "Well, I don't. I can't have a backdoor account on my device anymore." I mean, really, how expensive is that? Yeah, it may have some support implications, it's, yeah, it's but it's not in the grand scheme of things that big yeah. of a deal. So where we set the bar, I think in this case, when I think about the heinous vulnerabilities in medical you, devices yeah. and security you can also and internet of things, y- this you can, can help. <laughs> so I, I, can, I, want, I mean, you can ahead, label Jack, it too, right? I mean, yeah. you can label yeah. it. You don't have to call mm. it the data security standard. You can, I mean, you can call it you got to call the, the next bear, generation the, standard for security. That yeah. sounds easy. You, you, you drop to call NG, it, it's good. Um, you know, minimal Big standards. F- you need to call well, it like the minimal standard. And yeah, for minimum function. viable security. Yeah, but the, mi- the interesting yeah, mi- thing not is, take security out. Minimal okay, viable standard, right? You know, not, minimum, minimum vi- viable protection. Put the word minimum or something that implies if, this is the bare minimum. I, I if, agree. if they were to look at it's so, <laughs> so <laughs> real, <laughs> drink your cocktail. Did you fart? Yeah, drink Did your you fart? Oh, stop. No, no. Just, <laughs> if they were to look I'm at Soho no, routers, <laughs> none of them would get anywhere and, close to the and, certification. And, 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 and I want to talk about that and setting the bar. And Jack's tuning us out now, but I, I think that I'm, look, I'm looking at I Robert's article, and he, the, the first sort of heading is it's not the hacking problem. And, quote, according to the Data Beach reports, 95% of attacks are simple things like phishing, okay, SQL injection, and bad passwords. But if we take something like CyberUL, they can create a standard to say, hey, we're going to test things for SQL injection. How are you protecting against them? And you have a mechanism. The first time you turn this thing on, you have to change the damn password. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have to pick a good password. They can enforce the fourth part. They I mean, could enforce I mean, the second part. But I, yeah, I, I, I don't see. The, and now it says cyber UL addresses less than one person. Well, well and that, that's where I, that's where I said that's I, I'm not sure that, that he defined the right problem, right? Yeah. But but let's go back to it because you know, Paul, I, I know we we never get to talk about wireless routers anymore, and that probably upsets you. But, <laughs> but, 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 but I'm going to put you on the spot, though. Mike. Oh my God. Let me put you on the spot. Let about me put you on the spot. Could you? I mean, if I said, Paul, come up with a list, and and you don't need to come up with the list. I'm looking for a number. Uh, if you wanted to just across the board raise up the security profile of most of these devices and the embedded stuff that you look at, is it five things, ten things, twenty things? Yeah, it's ten things, and OWASP already has a list. They already have okay. a project. So, yeah. so what I like about this is here's, here's what I'd like to see actually. from a cyber for you all or anything else. I'd like to see somebody actually invest some time in helping us understand the problem. You guys know it's my favorite question, right? What's the problem we're trying to solve? And when we go with security, look, I think – Actually, I always enjoy these conversations. I'm Jack and I are agreeing far too much, so I don't know yeah, what's going knock on. Knock that shit off, you two. <laughs> yeah. This is a show. People but, pay good money to what? Oh wait, never mind. <laughs> but but look, double I think your money back if you're not satisfied. <laughs> we need to be. Wait, clear wait, 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 wait. No, let me clarify that. Double the money. Double your money back that you paid us to listen to this show. <laughs> so I have a really crazy solution to this problem. We take that's Gary. good. You know why we're still talking about this? Because there's really not much else to talk about this week in the news. <laughs> oh, that's okay. So this was so, perfect. <laughs> so here's what we do. Here's what we, do. Yeah. we take Gary McGraw's B-SIM. We make that into a law. And we have some fines. We say, you know, if you break some of these, pro- some of these processes and solutions, you get fined for it. And even better, you take the money and you pay the security researchers that find it and prove it. Boom. You know, Drop you know what? Let me, let me. I'm well, done. yeah, but but you know what I like about that? Then, if you do oh, that, then I, you then I want the security researchers researcher? to be cyber UL listed. That's exactly right, Jack. <laughs> I want the researchers to be right. cyber UL listed. Right. I, so I, I let want me, them validated. Let me, because I, I haven't pimped B sides in a while. B sides Vegas is coming up. Our opening on keynote is on keynote. On keynote is a moderated it's, conversation. It's between Chris Roberts and Wendy Nather discussing topics like what's appropriate, what's responsible, <clears throat> what research is, what's acceptable, what's, what the implications of freelance research are on CFAA and the government. And it's two people that are respected in, in the community. F- f- some people respect one more than the other and have very different points of view, but yeah. are able to have, an, a, have a conversation about it and the reason that's important to me is because if we can't have an adult conversation amongst ourselves without deteriorating into Twitter bullshit, 
Uh, hey, drama. when we have an adult conversation on the show, you'll be the first to I, I, I'll, be, I'll be sleeping through it. Um, but if we can't, like, for issues like this, then the powers that be who are making laws and regulations are going to continue <clears throat> to ignore us. And if we can't act like adults every now and then, I would argue they should. So, Jack, continue do to you remember nope. the RIP V1 protocol? Oh, I was hoping you were going to go with Wi-Fi Sense. But. Oh, sorry. We'll go there next. Okay. What? Yes. Really? Do you remember the guy that created it? Would you? No? no it's RIP. It, yeah, it's RIP, bro. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, it's made a comeback. It's been around since 88. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, oh, wow. Um, and I still find networks with people running it. And researchers at Akamai's Prolexic Security Engineering and Research Team put out an advisory, and they spotted an attack on May 16th that the distributed denial of service attack peaked at 12.9 gigabits per second. <laughs> that means more than one person, unless they have a 12.9 gigabit per second internet connection, which kind of defeats the purpose of distributed denial of service. Yes. You know 500 was. unique sor- sources were identified. It was probably banks. Attacking RIP v1. They used RIP v1 to do a DDoS attack. It was probably but banks were, running was, IBM what was it 360s. A, good yep. fucking yeah, God. What, what was it a... It was it a... Reflection attack, like everything else. It was, um, I believe so. Yes, because yeah, that's what uh, Akamai has yes. been seeing a ton of that. And, yes, and they uh, have. one of the one of reflection the reflection and amplification style right. distributed right. Sort of right. So, and we're going to see more of these for these things that people don't manage, right? Because we saw it with DNS, but who, for the most part, people that run DNS, um, like run things. Well, now you get DNS and then in you the get, cloud. I you mean, get these NTP. guys actually convinced me to run DNS in the cloud. And then you get like, NTP, I don't run right? my own DNS. So, so we had the, a sad day. Right. It's a sad day. But, but we had the reflected DNS, then reflected NTP, both of which are mm-hmm. tend to be run by, you know, people who manage systems. And now, oh, you know, one of the things Akamai's seen a ton of... Both of which are about as old as your children. Um, and <laughs> then, you know, we've seen a lot more SSDP, you know, the the, the discovery protocol of UPnP. Well, the people that are running that shit aren't admins, <laughs> right? And so, and now we're going to find these edge cases. Rip V1. Oh, nobody's still running. Oh, yeah, you know, it's it's still out there. It's mm-hmm. like those, it, it's been a while, but a few years ago, our friend Bob had that scanner thing in Moscow, and he found those Solaris, oh, yeah. bo- those mm-hmm. like Solaris 3 boxes that had yeah. thousands of ports open by default that were still configured by default, right? <laughs> you know, it's like... I remember Ed, someone who worked at a university found it because someone was injecting routes into the network doing man-in-the-middle attacks because mm-hmm. some routers still supported it. Yep. yep. It's sad. You know, there's I, ancient I, stuff out there. I, I mean, I, I, and I've, Steve and Gibson and still r- runs XP. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I've seen... I've been, You're on a Steve Gibson tear lately, dude. You just, you want I the hate make, mail. I make you want one comment hate. every week uh, or two. Jack at securityweekly.com. You can send it directly. <laughs> I love Actually, comments. send it to PSW. Yeah, we all, we, we kind of all want to see it. Because yeah. then we can all laugh. PSW at securityweekly.com. Tell us I, how much you love Steve Gibson. Speaking of sharing with Jack. Yeah, you wanted to talk so, about... So the I? idea is... <laughs> oh my God, now we're going to get takedown notices <laughs> yeah, right. for the music that we no, used. We did, no, we didn't use it. No, just, that's yeah, it. Yeah, I just, that was music, enough. So we might, yeah, that was we enough, might be good. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so this Wi-Fi Sense thing. Holy shit. Is this, this my makes story? No sense. Oh my God. So Windows Phone... Oh, the Windows 10 thing. Windows yeah, Phone yeah, 8. Yeah, Windows sense. Phone 8. Yeah. Uh, is it on Windows 10 as well? Windows yes. 10, yeah. Okay, because I only see it on Windows Phone 8, yes. which, of course, Windows Phone 8, I'm like, all right, it, it allows you to share your Those Wi-Fi password people. with <laughs> your friends over Facebook and Skype and all that stuff. So my, it automatically, my space, it right? automatically <laughs> figures out how Geo to accept cities. Wi-Fi's uh, network terms of service. Well, because this is a problem. I want to share my Wi-Fi network with <laughs> all of my friends, like all that are all here in the studio, but I don't want to have to tell you what it is. I don't mm-hmm. want to have to write it down for you. God forbid it could be a secure password if you're using this feature. It probably right. isn't. I just want to share it with you. Yeah. Hence Wi-Fi Sense. This is great marketing. Yeah. And you know what? I'd love to test this thing. But I, I don't want to be like user number five of a Windows Phone 8. So <laughs> like, I think what this really comes back four, to number four. is There's the three. cellular There's three now. carriers realize that they can do everything over Wi-Fi. So if you enable every device to use Wi-Fi by default, yep. suddenly you have to re- maintain the towers less. That's what I think that now, really goes now, back to. Now, and this is very interesting because this I actually heard about this when I was in Berlin last week. 
And it's interesting you say that this, the carriers can do everything over Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. And I was in Germany, and I did not have a local data plan for my phone. I'm like, I'll just use Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. No. There is almost no public or shareable really? open Wi-Fi anywhere in Germany. Well, it's because you're not using Wi-Fi Sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's there. There's they, and That's I. Really they, they told me about that, and the students that were there in Germany said, "Yeah, by by mm. and large, uh, if you do not mm. monitor and restrict the networks that you are um, standing up for open Wi-Fi, mm-hmm. uh, you're you're liable." Yep. So mm. if someone goes and connects to your open Wi-Fi and goes to kitty porn, mm-hmm. and you don't do any blocking or restriction of that. The company providing the Wi-Fi is liable, not wow. the end user. Yeah, because all over London when I was there, every every there was tons of open Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah with, Germany with, with London, nope. also in the Netherlands, it, it, some places in Europe. Uh, what I found was, you better have the Facebook app on your phone, because the way you got you you followed them on Facebook or liked them on Facebook, and, and then you get access. To and the then Wi-Fi? you'd get access to the Wi-Fi. Oh my God! Interesting. And huh. so I found that very common in Amsterdam and uh, mm. less common, but still common in Utrecht. Uh, it's <clears throat> somewhat in in London, not as often. I forget yep. what the, so, the one is. So I, 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 I haven't seen this. Uh, I'm sorry. Did you? Yeah. So, so, no, so I just I want, want to hit just, one more just, story just real quick on the finishing off the Wi-Fi sense. I'd love to actually see this in so practice, we, so right, I can look is, at the traffic. What exactly and find does out. Wi-Fi sense do? There's a <laughs> Nothing for the the three Windows 8, Phone eight users that but are out there. Windows Ten's out there, so it it makes it so that I can I walk in with my laptop, running Windows Ten or my Windows Eight phone, neither of which I have. Yep. Um, it will it will you can now share your already existing Wi-Fi networks and uh, information about I think information about how to get past the uh, terms of service. Stuff with oh, yeah, your friends. So when you walk into you so see you walk into Starbucks and, and boom and you got access. Yeah, done. Right. None of this you know, log in, none of this uh, So you accept automatically so you're automatic so I wonder about this. I wonder what the legal ramification is of automatic acceptance of terms of service. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because you know, there's layers of bullshit there. But e- and there's a way to and there's a way to um, opt out, right? You have to like change Perfect. your SSID. Lights. Lights. Is that, is that right, Larry? There's something yeah. like to change gonna, your we're gonna SSID. Have, we're going to have Apollo make, make one more nice. round. Because we, we got all the cameras and lights set up at the bar, and we haven't used them. So we're going to have Apollo make another another yes. round of something for us. And um, we're going to do some filming it. I got another story to talk about. If we we want to make Apollo's mic live, too. Yeah, there we go. We got to turn yeah. those. Yeah, he's in the dark now. We need to get some, get some light on the man behind the bar. Yeah, there's more lights. Oh, hold on, hold on. Can we, can we get that? We, uh, are you mic'd up back there? She threw the production guys into a loop like, what the fuck? <laughs> Chris is looking at the back of the mixer. <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't this shit plugged in? Oh, oh my God. So oh. what's this other story oh, you want to so talk about? So apparently, so, uh, naked security blog from Sophos is reporting that TV's newest hacker drama, Mr. Robot, is oh. technically sound and morally ambiguous, which oh. is unheard of so, for a show that talks about hackers. So, Apollo, don't get started too much yet because they, they, they're still trying to figure that. Okay. More, so, I haven't seen it yet. At least we're not. I haven't either. I was podcast. hoping one of you could tell me if it was worth it. I, ha- I was hoping you guys, but I haven't watched it yet. Oh. They just aired the pilot episode. Um, it's, it's, Apollo it's, says it's really good. And so, they, it, was on, it was on YouTube or they had Netflix? Summer and Counting and Cars now, is back on. Fuck everything else. CSI Cyber, they mentioned in here, <laughs> yes. um, was panned by TV critics and security experts alike. I don't know why we um, would pan the. Oh, God. But it uh, was really bad. Be- I think it, CSI Cyber got better. Uh, I think, I, honestly, I think it was well within reality for some of the stuff that they talked about right from the beginning. Right. It wasn't Scorpion. No. No, Scorpion was an atrocity. It also wasn't. In, for uh, many, many reasons, Scorpion was an atrocity. The, the writing, the acting. But the it was based on a true story. Production. Right. The it, was, it, was <laughs> based, it was based on, a, on an inductee into the charlatans, uh, the, the attrition charlatans. Yeah. <sighs> so, Scorpion, bad. Mike, do you watch any hacker shows? What hacker right. shows do you watch, Mike? The closest I Tiger watch team. is I, I really like Person of Interest. <laughs> you know what? No. I like it, too. 
I, and we I watch it pretty religiously. One. Lots of guns, and that's good. Well, I was guessing, well, you know, if you, if you got uh, Sarah Shahi in it and uh-huh. Amy Acker, uh-huh. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, and you, know, and you know what? You know what I've been watching lately is uh, NCIS. I love NCIS, mm-hmm. but I'm a season which behind. Which, so. which NCIS is the, the question? The original one. I'm actually okay. going through the original one. Nice. Uh, nice. Mostly because I love, uh, what's her name? Um, the forensics chick. That's Abby Shuto. Abby, yeah. Yep. I love her. She's awesome. Polly you Pratt. can't you can't not like her character mm-hmm. on that show. Nope. She's just such a I've been, I've been, been, uh, I've been doing um, uh, Walking Dead, been catching up back on that because oh, nice. I'm the two seasons behind. Yeah. Um, I actually watched 10 episodes of The Walking Dead on the airplane from wow. uh, Berlin to London, London to That's a serious to Walking Dead marathon. Dude. Yeah, 10 hours. You're not right after 10 episodes of Walking Dead. No, no, you actually park the car kind of close to the door and you, yeah, exactly. you leave all your running, bags in the car yeah. and you run. <laughs> With your crossbow over your shoulder. So, yeah. uh, Paulo, how are you doing over there? I'm doing pretty good. So oh, I'm thinking good. of making you guys a uh, Corpse Reviver number two. Corpse Reviver number, number two. two. Now, did you say, Apollo, that you uh, watched Mr. Robot? Yeah, I was actually pretty impressed by it. Um, Nick and I were talking about this in the car ride over is... They were talking about one of the executives talk was talking. To the, talk, the, talk to the camera. Yeah, so one of the executives <laughs> was talking to uh, the main character. He's saying, Yeah, you know, I still run KDE. I think it's pretty cool you run GNOME. And to just kind of have that kind of level of technical knowledge from the screenwriters was actually pretty impressive. And I believe it was the second episode, they were running an NMAP scan of the network. So mm, that's nice. pretty good. NMAP can chop that up to another. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, and what's, the, and what's the other show that, uh, that we should uh, consider? What was that, Silicon Valley? Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so uh, yeah. Mubix was actually yeah, one of the technical of advisors for uh, this the, the season of Silicon Valley. I, I hope he remembers so, those. So, so glad to hear someone yeah. from the community is involved. Yeah, uh, as, I don't as I don't know how many episodes he consulted on, but he was listed as a as a consultant. Um, and halt and catch fire. They talk about older technology in that one. Yeah, Paul's giving oh, the thumbs up. Fire. That's that's a great halt one. Get to watch fire. halt and catch fire. I like old school hacking. I watch uh, counting cars. I didn't yep. see that I, one. And I actually like Gas Monkey, Fast and Loud. I like that. Oh show. my God, I love that show. Gas, uh, gas Monkey. Garage, except I wouldn't loud. drive. Monkey. I wouldn't drive anything that came out of the Gas Monkey garage. No. 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 They, that's the difference with counting cars. Uh, yep. There are cars and bikes that I would actually drive or ride there. Uh, I mean, there is there's a solid. It's a it's a reality show. So there's sure. a good solid, you know, nine. Nine and a half minutes oh. of content every half hour. While we're just going over time, <laughs> Amazon uh, Amazon wrote a. TSL crypto library in only TLS. Six, uh, TLS. TLS. What did I say? TSL. TSL. Yeah. TSL. yeah, you know the drink clearly. A TSA library. A TSA, a TSA library. library. No. A t- Fondle TLS crypto yourself. library in only six. <laughs> a TLS crypto library in only six thousand lines of code. C code. C code. So for those one of us ten- that that intentionally don't code, is that a lot or not a so lot? So here's my question: At one tenth the size of OpenSSL, is it easier to spot bugs in this code? It does the number of lines, is really, is bugs attributed to the number of lines of code? Or is that just, I think that's really just one factor. I think it's, it's a good question. It's got to be a factor. A factor, not the necessarily defining factor. Yeah. But I'm not going to pretend to be an expert, but it. it <laughs> Jack, it's security. Pretend. Oh, wait. That's right. Fame Sorry. and glory, Jack. Fame and glory. Oh, sorry. Um, if you were trying to figure out why your car doesn't run right and it's got points in a carburetor and four cylinders it's a pretty simple question it's going to be easier to figure out than uh, some modern terrifyingly computerized true thing yep that doesn't mean though and you know it's somewhere along the line somebody has to make the you know the the profound statement that's arguably accurate and inaccurate both. Well, if you do it in C, it can't be secure because you should use the type. Oh, thing. God. Fuck. Fuck and everything. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, uh, Jack, Jack right. Back, back, back to your car analogy. You even go simpler. <laughs> See, back to my time in Berlin last week, you go with the Trabant, four-cylinder, two-stroke engine. Um, what, what oil so, pump? What so oil pump? Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> One less thing to worry about. Yeah, yeah, well, that's like old Saab two strokes, right? Don't mm-hmm. don't go downhill. Right. Never go downhill <laughs> with an old Saab two stroke. There's like what 
one person listening to this podcast who's nodding right now who knows what the fuck I'm talking about, <laughs> and it's not me. Uh, I mean, um, <laughs> oh boy. So well, simple. Good thing Apollo has so more cocktails. Simple. So speaking of being simple, we've got more cocktails. Um, <laughs> yes. yes. So I think that that gives you a a smaller set of things to look at. And mm -hmm. I, I think that using that language has advantages and mm -hmm. disadvantages at that level. Apollo, yep. what do you uh, put in that cocktail? Booze. Yeah, so the uh, Corpse Reviver. Number two. Number two. Involves Hendrix, a little bit of Cointreau, mm. and Koki Americano. The traditional recipe calls for Lolay, but again, the recipe changed in 1986. Koki Americano is a modern equivalent. That's all there is to it. Nice. And a lot of lime juice. It's like lemon juice. Nice. So Excellent. I'll be getting some double shaker action going in a sec, too. You oh, yeah. We want to get the double shaker action. Hold Show on. us the double shaker. I like double sh wait. The double best cocktails in oh, the It's like a shake wave. Speaking of which. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Double, sh double shaker. Speaking of which, things at Bond Thursday. Are you guys Are you guys here? Uh, are you guys traveling soon? Um, you're, next you're week. You're gone. You're next week. Next week I'm gone. But I may actually be able to participate because I'm out of class relatively early in, mm -hmm. in a hotel in a town that's kind of like uh, WTF. I will be here next week. Excellent. The week after I will be in Chicago. So. And then uh, shortly after that, uh, Larry, you're going out to DEF CON. Yes. Yep. Jack, you're going out early. You leave the day before I, I do, I think. So I will be here next week. The week after I will be in Chicago meeting some customers, uh, drinking at tiki bars and things like that. Uh, week after, I'll probably be here and then um, blacksmithing and then the run to Las Vegas. Yep. So that week, and I'll be well, the week before Def, the week before DEF CON and B-Sides, I may or may not make it, probably not. Um, oh. Actually, I won't. Mike Perez and I will be in Oklahoma City and I'll nice. be doing a corporate event in Oklahoma City. Oh, night. here comes, here comes, here comes here the double, comes double shaker. Double shaker. Double time. shaker. Let's go. Do it. Double shaker action. That was kind of anticlimactic. <laughs> yeah, that's how you do it. Nice. Just reminds me of the movie Cocktail with Tom. Never mind. Uh, so I'll be at B-Sides Las Vegas. You will be at B-Sides Las gonna Vegas. I'm going to be speaking. Uh, I think I actually have to speak the second day. i got to email them. Because the first day of B-Sides Las Vegas overlaps with You're the final class. day. I'm teaching right. class. Yeah. And so I'll I, I, I will... And then it'll be at Black Hat for a day. And then at DEF CON. So yes, I'm actually I, hitting... I will make an appearance at Black Hat in the afternoon at the company booth. Second day? Second day. So we'll be there together. We'll, we'll pop in, I think. Are you doing a, a presentation? Yes, the they're making me do I mean, you, they've asked yes. me to do a presentation. <laughs> right. We're both doing presentations on Thursday. At the booth at Black Hat the second day. So yeah, come, on the come second day. I'll us. be in the afternoon because in the morning yeah. I've got to tear down the network, which I've already started building for B-Sides. And, yeah. and then do we have a day in between when Black Hat ends? So Thursday, Thursday, is, is, that Thursday is, the, is the second day of Black Hat, first day of DEF CON, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday is DEF CON, so there isn't really a day. There's not a whole lot going on on Thursday at DEF CON, though. Right. So yeah. it's mostly Black Hat mostly black and Teardown from B-Sides. Gotcha. And then, and then there Friday. will be... So Thursday is the second day of Black Hat briefings. Right. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, DEF CON. Right. And there will be a beard and mustache competition again this year at uh, DEF CON fifth year, fourth year, something like that. I don't know. Redbeard did it for a few years. I've taken over last year and this year. Rance uh, and I have taken over, uh, and we're we're doing it again this year. We're gonna. So could I like enter the beard competition? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the um, and uh, Paul doesn't know this, but once again this year there will be signups. There'll be a box for signups at the for the competition at Paul's table. Oh, sweet! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So we'll. We'll That's good because I'll, I'll have reason. to remember to sign up, and it'll be right there, so I won't. Right, forget. right, right. Well, there's another Thank reason you, to stop by our ta the Security Weekly table and <laughs> get your Excuse your me. hack naked gear uh, and sign up for the beard contest. And uh, and we think mm, oh, and I got a call. I got I got a t her and see That's if good. I can get if she can come out and oh, hang yeah. out. Yeah, yeah that'd do be we great. do that thing there? Right, that'd be awesome. Let me know so we can confirm that. Yeah. Isn't that good? That's a good summer drink. Yeah. It's, very, it's like lemonade. It tastes it like lemonade. It does. And it, it had like a little taste of leather to it. Mm. That's good. That's good stuff. Uh, well, Mr. Santa, thank you very much.
Hey, it's, uh, somebody should mark this day down. Jack and I didn't disagree on anything. <laughs> yeah, work on that for next week. I'm sorry. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Apollo, for mixing cocktails. Cheers to Apollo. Heck, yeah. Raise the glass. Anytime. Cheers, Woo! guys. Cheers. Thank you, company. Cheers. Always fun. Thanks, everyone. See you next week. Prost. Did you make the production guys anything? Uh, I made them the uh, Harry Larry earlier. Oh, okay. You got to make them something. Larry. Oh. Right. Oh my gosh. It's like so long. I almost forgot. Like over and out stuff. Over and out! <laughs> <laughs>